Hey guys, Patriot coming to you today with a review of a small solar panel. Now I've got a couple other solar panels, three ranging from 10 watts to 27. I have a 10 watt, a 16, and a 27. All work good. Uh, they're, they're quite large uh, compared to this, even the 10 watt, which is a goal zero, which is the first one that I had. Since then I've increased in wattage and size a little bit to get a little bit more uh, effective use. Recently been interested in packing solar power with me on hikes and that sort of thing and uh, generally just sort of test the technology and see where things are going. The Goal Zero panel is not something that I want to carry. It does have a heavier type of crystalline panel on it and uh, the, the fabric and the cloth wrapped around it just makes it uh, more tanky and more weighty than, some, than what I want to carry. So I decided to check this one out and uh, let's go ahead and look at the Amazon page here. I'll kind of show you what, uh, what the specs are. Well, rather than screen capture it, I'll just show you right here off of my phone. But you can see it's called the Do Cooler, D-O Cooler. One of those goofy lost in uh, Chinesium uh, names there. They probably thought it sounded great, but didn't consult with anyone. Price is $15.98. They're calling it a 10-watt portable ultra-thin monocrystalline silicone solar panel. 5-volt USB port for iPhone, such and such, whatever. Okay, so uh, the biggest problem with this thing right off the bat, it is not a 10-watt portable solar panel. By the very best performance that I've ever measured off of this, it would be five and a half to six watt panel at the very most. So uh, a lot different than what is advertised. With that stated, I have tested this and seen some pretty decent performance out of it and I wanted to share that with you. So most of my on the move testing has been attached to this Camelback Rim Runner. 22. This is a 2016 model. They've changed it a little bit for 17, made it a little bit heavier, and I've lost this front pocket. But uh, this is working out pretty good, and this is my current get home bag configuration that I'll be showing you guys uh, a couple videos down the road. I have it uh, attached to the solar panel with these little night eyes, and uh, right now it's, it's sort of makeshift, but it does go through these rivets with a little bit of difficulty. Uh, you just sort of had to have to get them off at the right angle there. But what I would do is tie a little bit of shock cord to these and then it would come on and off these uh, small carabiners pretty easily. And then I've just got that routed to a power cell or a power bank. And uh, when you're on the move, that's the way that you want to use any of these solar panels uh, because as you're passing in and out of shade or you're turning with the sun not facing you, if it's hooked to an iPhone or some other electronic device, the device will normally turn off and then will not reinitiate a charge sequence until the device is unplugged and replugged back in. The power banks, the power cells, most of them are not sensitive to that. So power can hit this panel, sunlight can hit this panel and go away and come back and this will just resume charging normally without uh, any input or having to unplug it and plug it back in. All right, let's go ahead and unplug the uh, power bank right here. Uh, just to uh, show you the front of the panel. This panel actually contains a Sun Power panel. Uh, that's the name brand of this panel. As far as I can tell, it looks exactly like a monocrystalline Sun Power panel. Very high efficiency, 22% uh, efficiency rating. On the back here, you can see I've got some information. I've got that it's a 5 watt panel. I've actually seen it output just a little bit more than that. 2.7 ounces or 78 grams. And this is. Uh, you can see the name here, dew cooler, monocrystalline, silicon, ultra thin, and it really is thin. It's about two millimeters in thickness, not at the USB port. It's a little bit thicker there, obviously. Uh, you can see I've got a slight warp to it, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. It doesn't hurt the panel at all. It does have a little handle here, so if you just want to run a Velcro strap through here and hook it to your pack or something, that's kind of nice. This could be trimmed down if you wanted to. You could take off a little bit of uh, uh, excess around here. You could even remove all four of these rivets if you wanted to and just have the panel and cut this with a razor. It's fairly soft material. You can see it's kind of bendable and it does have a little bit of bend to it. So it's not real susceptible or um, 
but prone to to breakage because it it does have some give. You don't want to bend the corner outright, but uh, uh, it it does have a lot of flexibility. It's not a hard white plastic panel, uh, which is what it initially looked like to me uh, when I saw it on Amazon. Length, you're looking at just over 10 inches. Width in this direction, you're looking at about five and a half inches right on the mark there. Five and a half by about 10 and an eighth across. Fairly small footprint, um, very light, 2.7 ounces. Let's go ahead and put it on the scale here. 2.7, 78 grams. So I've had this now a couple of weeks. I've done several walks with it on the backpack uh, morning, evenings, and uh, had both power banks plugged in and my cell phone plugged in, both stationary and on the move. I've tested this in the dash through the windshield, in the backyard, hooked up to power banks, USB fans, uh, a couple of uh, recharge uh, tests on my iPhone 6 Plus and also an iPhone uh, 5 and uh, it gave some pretty decent performance. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll show some of that testing and then we'll come back here, I'll wrap it up and tell you what I think. All right guys, I've got a iPhone 5 right here. It is at 70% right now. I'm gonna take the dew cooler, throw it up here in the windshield. Not ideal through the, through the glass like that, but let's just plug it in and see what we get. All right, so we are charging. I'm just gonna kinda stick this up here, crack the windows to vent a little bit so it doesn't get too hot. But uh, time right now is 11.38, let's call it 11.39, and uh, we'll just come back in a few and see what we have. Okay, back again. It's been just over an hour, as you can see. And let's see what we've got here. We've got about 87%, hopefully that's focusing. Um, and again, that was just over an hour, so that would correspond with uh, less than 500 milliamps. Okay, I've got the dew cooler solar panel hooked up to this USB fan. It's a four inch fan. Let's go ahead and turn on the power switch, see what we got. Okay, as you can see, it's cranking along. Looks a little funny there with the uh, shutter speed of the camera. It looks like it's hardly moving, but it's going as fast as it normally would, plugged into the AC power or the computer or something. Let's go ahead and turn this perpendicular here, watch the shadow. So now it's knife edge to the sun. You can hear that motor went down a little bit. Even the back sides of the sun powers it pretty well. Let's go try this in the shade and see what it does. Okay, now I'm in the shade. In that direction is reflected sunlight. You can see it's enough to power, again, this very small lamp draw fan. But that's in full shade, so it is delivering uh, some power, even in complete shade just with reflected sunlight from the background. And then if I put this back out into the sun, so here it is back in the shade. I'm gonna move it behind us to the sun. All right, I've got the panel in direct sunlight. I've got a RAV power power bank over here. It's about a 15,000 milliamp hour. Let's go ahead and plug it in and just see what kind of indication we get here. All right, I get a standard charge indication on here, just as I always would. It seems to power up quickly. Um, I've tried it with two smaller power banks as well, get the same result. All right, that looks like a normal charge indication to me. Battery was already fairly charged, but looks like it's topping it off. Let's try the medium power bank. This is a 6700. Let's see what kind of indication we get there. Okay, I'm getting normal charge lights on that. I've got the solar panel roughly faced into the sun. 
I'm going to pan out here and we're going to hook up this uh, iPhone. This is a 6S Plus and you can see up here the power is 48% hopefully. The time right now is 157, 157, 157 and uh, let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, I got a charge indicator right away. Jumped up to 49% from 48%. I do have it in airplane mode right now because I'm going to leave the phone unattended for a while. But uh, let's go ahead and shut the screen off. And I'm just going to put it under here just in case the light shifts and hits it. And it's uh, roughly, let's just call it 2 o'clock. Okay, we've had our 5 watt solar panel in the sun continuously pretty much aimed directly at it. The sun has shifted, but let's come over here and take a look at the phone and see what we have. It is 3.43, roughly an hour and 45 minutes since we started the test. Let's take a look here and see what we've got. All right, we are showing 96%. That's 96%, so roughly a 48% recovery in about an hour and 45 minutes. Not bad performance at all, pretty decent. And since we're out here, let's take a quick measurement off the ground here. So about 156 degrees on the dirt and about 167 degrees off the solar panel. Now it is close to four o'clock now and it's not, you know, one o'clock or when we're gonna have our most intense sun. Yeah, 167, 168. All of the uh, cell phone testing that I did, by the way, was uh, with a standard three foot uh, lightning cable so there is going to be some loss in that length of cable if you can stick with something shorter you can get away with something shorter like this you're going to have less power loss and uh, and heat loss through there so it will be a little bit more efficient with a shorter cable the, the thing that you run into is in bright sunlight your device is also going to be in the sunlight and simply putting this behind it isn't enough to uh, to keep that device cool you really do have to have it off to the side in the shade and uh, if you run it too close, you risk the sun shifting and uh, uncovering this up. So uh, either the panel gets covered up or the sun ends up hitting the device that you're charging. When the sun is hitting this device, it's best to have a little bit of air gap behind it. And that helps to cool the panel from the back. And you'll sit, you notice that on those temperatures, the panel on the black was only about 10 to 12 degrees hotter than it was on the surrounding ground, but that's because we had good airflow through the back. If this is sitting flat on something, it's going to have less airflow, and this uh, pad, the silicon pad, does get pretty, pretty hot. Uh, I saw temperatures of over 175 degrees on the black. And what happens, uh, efficiency goes down the hotter this gets. So if you can keep it under 175 degrees, your best efficiency is going to happen. Now you might not live in a place where you ever see 165, 175 degrees on, on this panel, but I'm in the desert southwest, Arizona, lots of sun. This thing's putting full output uh, at four in the afternoon facing directly into the sun. Overall, for the price, the size and the weight. I think this is a fantastic little solar panel. It's a fraction of the weight of my 10 watt uh, dual pane solar panel, the Goal Zero, and uh, it's just uh, just couldn't be handier. Now, at the beginning of the video, you saw this attached to the front of the pack, or I should say the back of the pack, but normally this would reside uh, right up in the uh, water bladder pocket. Let me show that to you. Okay, so here's that pack again. Here's the side of the panel. I've opened it up and unzipped it. You can see I've got a couple pieces of reflex reflectix back there along with the water bladder. But typically in transportation mode to keep that from getting bent or scratched up or something, I would just keep it in there. And then when I was on the move and uh, started to think about charging devices, I would go ahead and take that out, clip it to the back of my pack. And there's different ways that you can do that. Again, with the different uh, handles and everything on there, you can use a piece of Velcro to secure it to the pack. You can use little uh, night eyes binders or whatever you want. Um, a shock cord would work too with just about anything. In addition to the testing that you guys saw, I charged this 3350 milliamp hour lipstick 
version in just under three hours, uh, about uh, three hours and 50 minutes it came out to. And, and that was uh, just in direct sunlight, middle of the afternoon. And in addition to that charge that you saw on the 6S Plus here, I did another charge last week on this from exactly 50% to 99% in uh, an hour and 32 minutes. So a slightly faster charge than what you saw on video, but uh, I figure I'd show you at least that one, but let you know that uh, it was capable of uh, charging slightly quicker. Today we had a little bit of high atmospheric haze, and I think that that was the, uh, the difference. Also the test I ran about uh, 15 minutes to half an hour later in the day than the test that I did last week. So pretty admirable performance from such a small, handy, thin, fairly durable panel. And uh, if you can get past the advertising nonsense where they list this as a, as a 10 watt panel, they know it isn't. They absolutely know it isn't. Uh, it's just advertising. They're trying to beat the other panels that are showing 5 watts or 6 watts. Uh, let me go ahead and show you a couple of those on my phone right now. This one is by King Solar. King Solar. It says ultralight 6.5 watt. Okay, a bit more realistic. Probably still isn't 6.5 watt, but, uh, but it's not too far off the mark. This one looks like a copycat, basically. It's made by King Solar, a little bit better known brand, but they're using the exact same uh, sun power cells as the dew cooler right here. Price on this one is 24. Bit more expensive. You're uh, you're talking a little bit of an expense there for a, a panel that's uh, that's less than six watts, five watts realistically. All right, let me show you another one. This one is also a King Solar. Uh, they're listing this as a five watt panel, so good on them for doing that. Unlike the Dew Cooler that lists it at 10 watts, but this one is uh, a little bit more rec um, square. Uh, form factor. It's a little bit wider, a little bit uh, shorter. Uh, I kind of like this one because it, it fits with the average shape of, of a backpack a little bit better, uh, whereas this one not so much. But uh, price on this one, just a little bit more than the one that I purchased. It was 18 bucks, but I like the form factor of the Dew Cooler the best. When this panel gets hot, uh, upwards of 175 degrees or so, it, it can uh, sort of have a memory to it. So if you uh, if you put this away and it's on an uneven surface or unsupported on a corner, as it cools back off, it will sort of take on the shape that it was left in. In any case, it doesn't really hurt anything. I've seen it warp in a couple different uh, different ways. Generally, returns uh, once you uh, lay the panel flat. Uh, after it's been hot. So if I get it real hot, I try to light, lay it on a flat surface and that'll give it the, uh, the best uh, chance of remaining flat without curling or warping too much, but definitely doesn't affect the performance at all. So I hope that was a helpful review on the Dew Cooler 5 watt solar panel. Remember it's going to be listed as 10 watts, but uh, it is a pretty handy little device and for the size and weight, I think it's a nice addition in a get home bag or a, or a long-term bag. For a long-term bag, I'm probably gonna go with my 16-watt panel, but for the size and weight of this, it could definitely back up a, a 16 panel if you wanted to charge you know, multiple devices or just have a backup in case something happened to the other one. And that would be more of a, a long-term wilderness uh, solution where you were carrying two panels, but I think that, uh, that this is a pretty handy little unit. This would even go in a backpack with your laptop. For a laptop, you're going to want to uh, run a, a much more powerful panel, at least a 16 watt or 24 watt, somewhere in that territory. But for your smaller devices and iPhones and uh, battery banks and power cells, that sort of thing, uh, this little solar panel does quite admirably uh, for its, uh, its size and weight. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Patriot out.